Now our first presenter this morning is Dr. Doug Boyd, a cardiothoracic surgeon at UC Davis. He has worked long to reduce the invasiveness that's necessary with open heart surgery. And so in 1999, he um, completed the world's first closed chest beating heart coronary artery bypass surgery using a robot-assisted surgery team. He was the first to do that. And he went on to perform in 2006 the first implant of engineered decellularized animal tissue for cardiovascular repair, and he's going to tell us a little bit about that. But it's um, creating a scaffold for regenerating a patient's own cardiovascular tissue. And today, Dr. Boyd is working on an implantable biological device for heart repair using a novel stem cell matrix technology. And we are so pleased that he is part of UC Davis. You are going to be really excited about the work he's doing. Doug, please come up and tell us about it. Well, thanks, Claire. I really hope I don't disappoint you. One thing, I wish I had regenerative medicine to give you all uh, binoculars so you could see my slides that are so far away. So I apologize for that. Uh, I do have to disclose that I'm on the medical advisory board of Core Matrix Cardiovascular. I was in Borders just last weekend, and I saw this, uh, this magazine cover, and I know what you're all thinking. Uh, he was interested in the last minute tax tips, but no. <laughs> In actual fact, I was interested in the medical breakthroughs, and he, if you, as you can see from this slide, the heart is, is a, a primary focus. When you look inside the magazine, they talked about the promise of regenerative cardiac medicine for the treatment of, uh, of people with, with heart disease. And this is a very, very uh, appropriate thing because, as we know, 81 million Americans are affected with heart disease. And it's, it's a fact that for the last 110 years, heart disease has been the number one cause of death, with the exception of 1918, the, uh, the global um, Spanish flu pandemic, in which 50 million people died. The cost of cardiovascular disease is astronomical to society. Half a trillion dollars last year alone on, on the treatment of heart disease. To put that in perspective, that's almost double the cost of the treatment for all cancers combined. Over half a million patients underwent some kind of heart repair surgery uh, last year. Many surgeries require repair of the heart muscle, great vessels, or pericardium using a patch. The problem is when you use synthetic materials, it's not natural. It causes fi uh, fibrosis and scarring, and the body tries to reject it. It can get infected. Ideally, we would have a patch that would encourage tissue remodeling and regeneration without scarring, and then it would just go away, so there's no risk of infection. Surgery has been evolving over the years. In the 1940s, Alfred Blaylock at Johns Hopkins did the first heart surgery. In the 50s, the first, you know, bioprosthetic heart valves became available, and they, they were started to be replaced. As we all recall, in the, in the mid-60s, whole organs were replaced. Christian Bernard performed a heart transplant. And then in the 80s, um, uh, in Utah, uh, the Jarvik artificial heart was uh, used to replace an organ. The new millennium is also bringing great strides in advancement in medical care, and that's biosurgery and the promise of, of uh, regenerative medicine. And so what I'm going to talk to you briefly today is about the important role of the matrix in biosurgery, the extracellular matrix, and how that matrix is going to play a critical role in myocardial regeneration in the future. I'm going to talk to you briefly about what we're doing in the operating room today using regenerative medicine and try to give you a glimpse into the future about where we're heading clinically. What you're made of is two things, cells and matrix. That's it. This is what matrix looks like. It's a scaffold. It's a trellis. It's what the cells must have to grow on. Matrix directs how cells behave. And that is why we can use matrix from other species to help with human diseases. We can use healthy animal matrix to cure diseased human matrix. Matrix almost has magical qualities. It does all these things. It's immunomodulatory, antimicrobial. And, but the neat thing is it has homing factors that attract the body's own stem cells and then affects site-specific remodeling, 
What I mean is if you put matrix in one part of the body, like an artery, it will stimulate arterial growth. If you put it in a muscle situation, it'll grow as a muscle. This is a bit of a complex slide, and I can't point it out, so I apologize. I don't want to turn my back to you. But uh, this slide essentially shows the mechanism of the biochemical and mechanical information transfer between the matrix here and the cell that's below it. And this is very, very critical. Laminins essentially attract stem cells. They uh, affect differentiation. Fibronectins are large dimers. They're the homing factors. They attract stem cells, fibroblasts, and endothelial cells to newly forming matrix. And the integrins are the lock and key. That, the integrins are the part of the matrix that actually lock into the cells that are delivered uh, to the matrix. And what happens then with this is that once the matrix and the cells is uh, attached, this, uh, there's information transfer that occurs between the matrix and the cell. And in actual fact, what happens is that through this mechanism here, the mechanical and chemical properties, there's actually an alteration of gene expression something that we call dynamic reciprocity. The cell gets information from the matrix, which ultimately then the, the cell changes and then uh, alters the matrix and, and what the cell secretes and so forth. Gene expression is altered. So I'm gonna tell you a few things about clinical in, in, in the lab. What we do is we take matrix and we put, in, put it into damaged tissues. The cells need healthy matrix to grow. What we know without a doubt from matrix biology is that, that cells cannot survive without a healthy local matrix. And so no matter what type of cell it is or what organ it is, if the donor cell does not have a healthy matrix to adhere to, it simply will not survive. This is a uh, rat heart in the labs in Minnesota. And you can see what they've done with this rat heart is they've taken all the cells away, total taking the, the cells away, so just a little ghost. What they did then was they dripped on stem cells. And you can see within one week, it was a beating, functioning heart. This is what the editor said in Science. This is absolutely extraordinary. This is the first time that someone has succeeded in growing a beating, functioning heart. And what appears to me that the key is that they use the fibrous skeleton of the heart. And it seems that there is some information encoded in this fibrous skeleton that the stem cells have the ability to interpret and they use that information to grow into muscles and blood vessels. The fibrous skeleton is the key. So how does this pan out clinically? Well, this is what we use. It's, 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 a, it, it's a sheet of material that comes from the intestine of pigs. And it's a unique material. It's f primarily collagen-based. It's thin, about 100 microns. But it's loaded with cytokines and activated factors that stimulate uh, growth in the, uh, the intestine, which, as you know, rapidly turns over. In our lab and in other labs, we have been able to regrow a number of different organs and tissues that include esophagus, tendons, bladders, and, and in my case, hearts. You can see this is an experiment. I'm sorry you, you need a telescope to see this, but here is a heart. We've cut out a huge piece of muscle out of the right ventricle and put in this thin matrix patch. And you can see it's, it's a, a sizable patch. We've sewn it into the right ventricle of a pig. This is hemostatic, but it's so thin you can actually see the blood circulating in as the heart beats. At six weeks, you can see this acellular patch has thickened 30-fold. And if you look at the edge of where the material is and this matrix patch, you can see that it's no longer acellular. It's full of cells. It's full of cells and blood vessels. But also what you see in this is how the body has reacted to this material that's put in. Normally, when you put in any foreign body, the body tries to reject it. It's fibrosis and scar and tries to eliminate it. But here, you don't see any of that. You see confluence. You don't see any reaction to this material. It's recognized as self. At 10 weeks, this totally acellular thin patch looks like this. We have regenerated heart muscle in, in animals. This is extremely exciting. You can even see this, the white stuff is, resor is resorbing matrix, but it even has the heart, it even has the trabeculae. 
We have now applied this technology clinically in humans at UC Davis. And the neat thing about this material is that often you do something in the lab and it doesn't work in humans. But in this case, every time we've applied this material in humans, it's completely concordant with what we've seen in the lab. It's done exactly the same thing. And that is one of the very, very exciting things about applying this material for humans. I'm just going to show you, I showed you that picture of the heart, but I'm going to show you what we did in humans. And I'm, I'm, I'm sort of show, demonstrating this because we took the heart and, and I'm operating right in here in between the major muscle wall that, that separates the two chambers. This unfortunate fellow had a huge heart tumor in between the walls of his upper chamber. That, that little golf ball is, is a tumor. And in order to take out that tumor, I had to excise and, and cut out the whole wall, the whole septum. I took a matrix patch and repaired that wall with matrix patch. 13 months later, uh, we got an MRI. The MRI shows complete regrowth and regeneration of that muscle with no evidence of foreign body whatsoever. As a little uh, prankster, I sent this up to um, uh, a very senior MRI uh, um, radiologist and asked him to interpret it. He interpreted it as normal heart with the exception of this thing here, which was an artifact from a sternal wire. The first bioscaffold was implanted for, cardiovas for cardiovascular purposes in 2006, and we were lucky enough to be involved in that. And since that time, many, many patients have benefited, but we've got a long way to go. UC Davis is now recognized as a world leader in applying this technology and these kind of scaffolds for cardiac repair. Where are we going with this? Congestive heart failure, a $35 billion problem yearly. Here you can see in, in our lab, I've liquefied this matrix and I'm injecting it into uh, an animal's heart that we infarcted three months before. It's a, so I'm injecting this in infarct. We put the matrix in the damaged heart. It will attract the body's own stem cells to, into the damaged area so we can repair it. This is what that scar looked like before we injected the matrix. At 10 weeks, it's completely filled out. We have recreated heart muscle growing in infarcted muscle. Where are we going with this? We've got, with the work with, we can do with Jan Nolta and with the Institute for Regenerative Cures, we plan on upregulating the matrix, enhancing it with human stem cells, and there's many conditions in which this is going to be beneficial. We're going to combine the matrix with catheter-based stem cell delivery, so we can start regrowing heart muscle starting when people have infarcts in the cath lab. And the other thing that's really exciting is patients that have end-stage failure that are currently supported with assist devices, we're going to inject this matrix in at the time of the device and hopefully they'll be able to get off the artificial heart and regenerate their own heart muscle. I'm just going to share with you briefly uh, a patient of mine that was one of the early patients that ever got uh, a matrix, and he's benefited from this bioscaffold technology. I just want to say, don't let uh, looks or how he sounds fool you. This guy is the CEO of a $100 million company. My name is Gary Gibbs. Uh, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak for the California Institute of Regenerative Medicine uh, about stem cell research and matrix research being done by Dr. Doug Boyd. Uh, Dr. Boyd operated on me a couple of years ago and in the process of uh, open heart surgery, he applied a matrix uh, patch to my pericardium and uh, now I have a fully recovered pericardium as a result of that. In addition, uh, I feel great. Uh, in this case, the ability to, to make a stem cell communicate properly with the tissue and the environment that it is placed in is a major breakthrough. And uh, as a result of, of that research and ongoing research and the need for more research, uh, it renders hope to those of us that have terminal diseases. You know, dealing with your own mortality, the stress that's related to that, anytime you have a stent and you have any type of chest pains, you, you know that you don't have the gold standard of correction, number one. Number two, uh, you don't have this additional research that 
plays into that gold standard and makes it even more effective uh, in the long-term uh, care of coronary artery disease. The ability to regenerate and anything of that nature is so far off the charts for a layman like myself. However, it, it's out there and uh, it needs to be uh, it needs to be nurtured. I just want to thank the board for the opportunity uh, of this presentation. Thank you, Doug. And I just want to point out that Doug came to California and UC Davis because of the opportunities from Prop 71, and we're all benefiting from, uh, from that. So thank you very much.